Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. Listen, God has started doing mighty things in this month of September. And I want you to cash in on it. See, if you just open your heart and be simply led by the Spirit of God. Simply. To be led by the Spirit of God is not, it's not so loud a thing. It's very simple. Holy Spirit, I submit to you. Show me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. It's as simple as that. See, on a daily basis. See, you know, you don't have to go and lock up yourself for three months to hear what God wants you to do. Holy Spirit, just guide me. Anything you want me to know, bring it to my attention. He will do his part. Say, what if he's doing and I'm not obeying? Listen, when you're disobeying the Lord, you will know. You will know. See, you will know. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you today. Oh, Lord, you've been so blessing us this whole week. And today we want to say thank you. And you will complete this blessing for this week by granting us clear utterance today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now we, 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 we are still in chapter 14. And then when verse 30 now, it says, If anything be revealed to another that seated by, let the first hold his peace. See, let me read from verse 29 so you get what he's saying. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. Now you're following. If anything be revealed to another that seated by, let the first hold his peace. Now he's just telling you how they were holding services. Some people say, hey, this has, you know the kind of confusion this has caused? Because you were not in the midst of true believers. That's the problem. That was the problem. Praise God. Be around real believers. You will, you will enjoy what fellowship is. Praise God. Say, For ye may all prophesy one by one. Did you see that? Ye may all. Oh, how can a church of 3,000 have everybody prophesy? We will not leave that place now. A church of 3,000 people should all be submitted to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the master of time. He knows, he knows how to fix things up. If we just trust Him, simple, trust Him. You know, one time I, I, I used to have question and answer services. You know, we just hold service and then open question. No censored question. No write down the question. I said, take the mic, you have a question. And I said, someone asked me, uh, Someone asked me one day, said, how do you do this? What if someone throws a question that is out of place? I said, very simple. We, we, we are doing this by the leading of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit knows exactly what questions will be asked. And he knows exactly what questions can never be asked. So what if someone asked? He will give the answer. He will. See, and, and you learn from Jesus <clears throat> that every question that was thrown at Jesus, he used it as an opportunity to teach and to bless the people. See, and that, that's what we learn from Jesus. And as I've seen that happen several, you know, someone asks a question and then you don't start trying to answer the question. You speak as the Spirit of God have given you utterance. And eventually, both the questionnaire and every other person gets blessed, including you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I'm not saying go do it if the Lord has not commanded you to do. <laughs> we did it because the Lord said, do this for, for this number of time. Yeah. All right, then. All right. And, and the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Now, this is, this is plain truth. Don't say, you know, say, hey, Pastor God gave me a word. Or that Pastor God gave me a word when I was nothing. But he refused, he refused me to share it. He refused me to share it. Ah, hey. You know, somebody, I, want, I, must, I must prophesy this word. If not, if not, oh, come on now. Write it down. Send it to the person. Send it to the pastor. You see, if, 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 this, if it's the time doesn't permit and you feel strongly in your heart that, you, why don't you take up the pen? That tango today we have pen and paper. Write it down and send it in. So, why we pray the Lord gave me this word? And what if the pastor doesn't share that? That becomes his problem. 
you have done your part. You have been delivered from his hands or from whatever. Praise God. Now it says, mm, 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 mm. For God, see, well, I interpret what he just said. Okay, see it. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Did you see that? He's not the author of confusion. So where you see confusion coming out, it's not God. He wasn't there. Where, where you see in a church now, now this is talking about church gathering now. No, the, the, the church is the body, it's not the building. He's talking about the, where the people gather in the building, in a house or wherever you call church service. You know, that's what he's talking about. Now he says, you remember James said, where there's envy and strife, there's what? Confusion and every evil work. So when he says, for God is not the author of confusion, he doesn't bring in confusion. So when you see confusion, you know that Satan is ruling over that place. Oh, sure. Satan is the one ruling over that place. Now, you see, even as a pastor, there are times people will try to bring confusion. But, you see, if you don't let strife come into your heart, you will handle that situation so perfectly and everybody will be at peace. Because it's your job as the administrator of that service to bring peace to that place. See, you started that service out in peace. It is your job to maintain the peace. And how do you maintain it? By the Holy Ghost. You will know how to answer everyone. If some, but the moment you let strife into your heart, you have submitted yourself over to the devil. And what is going to be the outcome? Confusion everywhere. I'm telling you the truth. So sometimes people will hurt you. Why? They are trying to set confusion in your midst. Don't fall for it. All right then. So it says, for, for God is not the author of confusion, but, but of peace, as in all the churches. And he said, let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. You see that now. There was a law in place then that women should not speak in public. You, you know that. Now, Paul was speaking based on that law. It doesn't mean women doesn't, don't have, you know, because of this scripture, people say women should not preach. Women should not preach. But we've seen in scripture, God used women mightily. Oh, we've seen that in the Bible. God used women mightily in utterance. In, you remember God sent Abigail. God sent Abigail to deliver David from harming himself when he was about to attack her husband. See? It was the utterance. She spoke prophetically to him. And he remembered, oh, thank you so much for coming to stop me from avenging myself. You know? So, he, now, now, he said, the, the, there was a law that told women, <coughs> excuse me, that, that don't authorize women to speak. See, where, where men, you know, when men are talking, you two, you are talking. That's where all those ideas began to come from. <laughs> you see, but you see, some of these laws, the question you now ask is, was it God that said it? No, it wasn't God that said it. Moses, or, 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 or whatever the law, that law came from, they were just trying to set order. See, so they look at it, look, if you have a husband, and that's exactly what he said. Let me, let's read further. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted for them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Did you see that? For it is a shame for women to speak in church. Now, what's he saying here? Why does he say it's a shame for women to speak in church? <laughs> All these women preachers, you are shaming yourself. Listen, he is talking about a married woman. First of all, he says, look, um, there is no point. If you have any question, now, it, is, it, it means there is an understanding that your husband is more spiritual than you are. See? And then secondly, there is an understanding that if you want to know anything, you just ask, oh, you have a question. Don't, don't interrupt the meeting and say, ah, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I have one question to ask. And then, nah, and I'll talk. And in those days, According to the law, everyone looking at you, this is why you're bold. <laughs> like, hey, hey, you're bold. See, nah, 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 nah. That, that, that's what they had then, according to their law. 
Now I said, it is not God that gave them that law. They set those laws to create order. Now it wasn't just a thing of, of church. It was a thing of society generally. A woman is not, was not allowed to speak for herself. You remember now, <clears throat> Even women were not allowed to own things. Women are not, not allowed to inherit. You remember that story in the book of Numbers. Some, some, some young ladies came to Moses and said, Moses, our father is dead and please, I think it's right that we should receive inheritance from our father's property. And Moses realized that he didn't have an answer. Now the norm was, no, they don't. You don't receive anything because your ladies, your father dies without his son, his brother and his children will take everything. So these ladies came to Moses, and what Moses did the wisest thing. He went to the Lord. He said, Lord, I don't know what to answer these people. The Lord said, they are right. It is right for them to inherit their father's property. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then he came back and said, this is what the Lord said. Inherit your father's property. So in this case also, you don't just say because the Lord says, you find out what the mind of the Lord is. Praise God. Now, he, like I said, it was to set order in church. For example, if, you, if a husband will speak, and when the husband finishes speaking, and then, and then, you know, you know sometimes you see that thing happen you know, in, 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 a, in a meeting setting. The husband will say something, the wife will now say, eh, and I, I want to say something, and sometimes she will even say what, I mean, say something against what the husband has said. He says, don't do that. As a married woman, wait, when you get home, you ask your husband. And then what does your husband do if he doesn't have the answer? Go ask the, 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 the church leadership or the elders of the church and then will tell her I will get the answer for you. Now it was to create order. It's not doesn't say he wasn't saying that women should not, you know. In most religions, you find that women are relegated because of that code law that they were walking by. Alright then. It says um, verse 36 now. What? Came the word of God out of you? What? Came the word of God out of you or came it unto you? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order you see his points now all he's saying is to look everything should be done decently and in order but now you don't take all these things and replace or form a tradition or a religion out of them you must still submit your conduct to the spirit of god and and here's a sign that the spirit of god is with you he will create order he's such a gentle spirit the people will never tell you, prophesy and prophesy now. Shout it now. Hey, pastor, pastor, have a word. Have a word. And then I say, hold on. Hold. No, pastor, the Lord said I must give this word right now. The Lord said I must give this word right now. He said, no, calm down, calm down. No! You might just be distracting the servant. And most times it's not the Lord, it's your emotions that is working. I've seen this happen many times. You see, people, who, they are so aggressive in doing those things. And then when you try to say, that pastor, yeah, the devil wanted to use him to stop the flow of God. You know, the, God was bringing out a prophecy. God, the devil wanted to use that pastor. People talk like that. They are ignorant. Now they grow up later in maturity and they think of the stupid things they used to do before and then they realize, hey, man, I remember those days and I wonder what was wrong with me. <laughs> yeah! So why don't you just grow up in maturity? Do everything in order. So, okay, so what of this one now that I say women should not speak in, does this thing, hey, the law today permits that women can speak. But also that doesn't mean that they should speak anyhow. They say men shouldn't speak anyhow. If you don't have anything to say, keep quiet. Don't speak because other people are speaking. Say, ah, they have nobody have heard my voice. Let me say something too. No. If you're married, you have a question, ask your husband first. He may just have the answer and then spare every other person. Except it's a situation where it's going to be a blessing to the people. Then you allow the Lord lead. Now, this doesn't stop a pastor from telling a woman to speak. If you feel you're handling a meeting, you feel a woman has a word, Come on, bring it forth. Because the Bible says there is neither male nor female in 
Christ, right? Yes, praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. Thank you for helping us finish this chapter 14, Lord. There was so much in it that brought great blessing to us. Lord, I release your blessing to everyone this weekend. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Indeed, this weekend, you will count your blessings. For you will see the hand of God upon your life. You will see the Spirit of God walking in you like never before. And you will see that your life is being a blessing to many. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go and prosper. Be well. And do well. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.